Everyone is arriving at the set of Undercover Woman, but Joyce has a special request for the group. Mitzi broke up with her boyfriend last night, and she's feeling a little down. So if they could all try to help cheer her up, that would be good. Meanwhile, Joyce just got her fourth learner's permit from the Department of Motor Vehicles. Now all I need is to have someone go for a drive with me so I can practice. No, Joyce, please. We'll continue the running gag about her driving at various points in the episode, and it's all been done before on this show. Suppose we get to something a little more interesting. Oh, Tracy. Oh, Doug, not again. We go through this every day. No, no, this is different. The network is having a big dinner on the 15th, and I was wondering I'm if... I'm busy on the 15th. Look, Doug, the fact that she did you one time to keep you from offing yourself doesn't mean she'll ever be interested in doing it again. This is Tracy, remember? Instead of chasing Tracy around all the time, have you ever tried dating a nice young girl? Sweet, <laughs> gentle, considerate, unselfish? Sure. But where am I going to meet someone like that? All I know are actresses. That's not exactly accurate. He does know one very nice young lady, and Joyce wants to fix them up. Joyce, matchmaking never works. Haven't you learned from your failures? What failures? I, I never did it before. Yes, you have. You got us together. Oh, come on, John. That match wasn't a failure. You were. <laughs> I think we could all see that joke coming, but Betty White made it work. She may be the only person in the world who could have. Mitzi just came in. Let's get to work. Well, you and Doug have known each other for quite some time, and uh, you've both been, what shall I say, unlucky in love lately. Joyce, if you're doing what I think you're doing, please stop doing it. What's she doing? Mitzi caught on and Doug didn't. The world is officially upside down. She thinks just because I broke up with my boyfriend last night, I'm going to be sitting home all alone. So she's asking if you can pick me up tonight around 7.30. Don't you think that's a silly idea? No. Okay, I accept. Next thing we know, they've gone out every night this week. Oh, Doug, I had the best time tonight I've ever had. I had an even better time. Oh, no, I had a better time. Oh, no, I had a better time. In fact, they're worse than hormonal teenagers. Doug just asked Mitzi to that network party that Tracy snubbed him about, and she's excited but nervous. But I'm going to be scared to death. I won't know what to say to those people. Oh, relax, Mitzi. Network executives are just like anybody else. They put their pants on one leg at a time. You didn't tell me it was that kind of party. I repeat, Mitzi got all the best lines in the show. Without her, I doubt it would have lasted four episodes, much less 14. But good stories have conflict, so let's introduce some. Oh, Doug, I've been meaning to speak to you. You know the network dinner on the 15th? Oh, sure do. I'm looking forward to it. I think it might be a good chance for both of us to put in a word for our show. Perhaps we could take the president aside and work on him. Yeah. The network president is going to be at that dinner? Oh, yes. All the top brains in the TV industry will be there. Guess what? Tracy just slipped into her gold digger clothes. As I've said before, I won't go in for the slut shaming that the show does because it's a double standard. Either it's okay for both men and women to sleep around or it isn't okay for either of them to do it. You can't play yes for one and no for the other, at least not in this new millennium. We've learned too much and too many of my fellow boomers can't seem to grasp that. I will, however, shame her for deception and manipulation using her natural assets to jerk Doug around because she wants a favor from him. Oh, uh, Doug. Yes, Tracy. That network dinner, isn't that the one you want me to go to? Wanted you to go to. I've arranged to take someone else. Oh, what a shame. Because I had my heart set on it. Case in point. She'll practically undress him right there until he gives in. Now he gets to tell Mitzi. Hi. Oh, hey, Mitzi, hi. I wanted to show you the dress I bought for the network dinner. 
Isn't it beautiful? It's a lovely dress. Look, Mitzi, I gotta talk to you. Could we go in Joyce's dressing room? He is spinning the biggest bunch of male bovine droppings that I have heard in ages. He asked Tracy, and he thought she said no, but really the no was a voice message from someone with a similar name, and Tracy had already said yes, so that means he shouldn't have asked Mitzi because Tracy was already going with him. Sure. I've had the exact same thing happen a hundred times. <laughs> so you see, I have to take Tracy. Of course. I'm really sorry. Don't be. I think the three of us will have a lot of fun. He's going to dump this sweet, innocent, caring person for Tracy. When he explains that he has to take Tracy instead of her, she finally understands he's standing her up. But the way he goes about it, she's not shattered. Of all things, she's penitent. How embarrassing for you. Yeah, it really is. I put you in an awkward position. Yeah, well, n not exactly. I mean, you with that prior obligation to Tracy and me just complicating everything. I'm really sorry, Doug. Let's recap. He asked her after Tracy snubbed him. She was minding her own business, nursing a bit of a broken heart, and with a little prodding from Joyce, he did the rest. But she really believes this is all her fault. If he had any sense, he'd rub his hand in Tracy's face until all that makeup was upside down, then he'd go marry Mitzi. No, I'm going to leave it to your own imagination to picture what that would look like. We're going to get to the bottom and find out who's on top. We know a little about Mr. Big. But if this is a front, I'll be back. I thought about asking how hard it is to write dialogue that bad, but considering the writing we've seen on this show, I'm going to guess it's second nature. Joyce is staying home from the dinner so John can take Mitzi. Joyce is still upset about what Doug did. Joyce, he didn't stand me up. He asked Tracy first, and she said yes. But some agent said no, and the agent's name was Stacy, and he thought Stacy was Tracy, so he had to take her. <laughs> That's the biggest crock I've ever heard. It won't take long for Mitzi to realize that Joyce is right. Doug lied to her because he elected to take the hot actress instead of the adorable, wonderful, real person. She starts listing some awful things Mitzi should have done to him, which we'll revisit in a moment. John is here to pick her up, and frankly, he looks so dashing, I'd consider going out with him. But guess who else just rang the doorbell? Hi, Joyce. Is Mitzi here? Yes, she is. <laughs> Joyce! That's terrible. I'm surprised at you. That's no way to talk to Doug. Mitzi! Shove off, turkey. <laughs> That's the way to talk to Doug. Mitzi does have her moments. John finally lets Doug in. He's had a serious attack of conscience, and he's really sorry. Mitzi doesn't care. I should have torn your lungs out. <laughs> Mitzi, to err is human. I should have peeled your ears down like a banana. <laughs> To forgive divine. I should have slammed your lower lip in a drawer. I like that one. It's imaginative, you have to give it that. It reminds me of how Carol Burnett described what childbirth feels like. She said, just take your lower lip and pull it over the top of your head. Joyce starts motioning to Doug to apologize, grovel, whatever it takes. I don't know what got into me. My brain must be filled with blubber. <laughs> My knees must be filled with blubber. <laughs> Only Doug could come up with a statement like that. I'm a fool. I behaved like an idiot, uh, a fathead. Uh. Joyce, don't you think he's suffered enough? I'd like to hear one more. It's not Joyce's decision, John. It's Mitzi's. And if she wants one more, she'll get one more. Mitzi, I know what I did was wrong. I was... Weak. And then I made things worse by lying to you. I know that I hurt you very deeply. But I'm genuinely sorry. Can you forgive me? Sure. Actually, I forgave you when you said your knees were filled with blubber. 
as I said, only Doug could come up with a statement like that, and only Mitzi could appreciate it like that. These two are a good match. It's settled, they're an item again, and they're off to dinner. John will take Joyce, of course, and a good time will be had by all. But there was one person who didn't end up going, and she's confused. Doug stood me up. Yes, we know. <laughs> what was it, Mitzi? What do the two of you have in common? Tell her, Mitzi. I think it's physical. <laughs> that was a good epilogue, and as usual, Mitzi gets the best line. I'm okay with that because she's far and away the most interesting character on the show. We also got to see that Doug isn't as shallow as he comes across. He has personal ethics, and when he violates them, his conscience harasses him until he has to make it right. I consider Alex Henteloff just about the perfect person to play him because his expressions and mannerisms are totally believable. He can go from the tough network boss who has to make the hard decisions to the quivering worm who's afraid if he does, somebody won't like him anymore. Most of his career has involved doing character parts on television, and his distinctive face and voice have made him one of those people that makes you sit up and say, I know that guy! He was in that other thing I watched. What was it? I have a feeling if this had been the Georgia Engel show with him as co-star, it might have had a better chance of surviving. But somebody seemed to think going for star power and name recognition was a better approach than writing and creating a genuinely good show. Even the incredibleness that is Betty White couldn't overcome that. In fact, they're worse than hormonal TJ. Blah, 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 blah. You can't play yes for no and not. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Yes for no? So that means he shouldn't have asked Mitzi because Tracy was. Blah, 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 blah. Slow down. Of all things, she's penitent. But White couldn't overcome that. And then forget to fade out, stupid.